the Cube Studios in Palo Alto and Boston, connecting with thought leaders all around the world, this is a Cube Conversation. Hi, and welcome to a Cube Conversation. I'm Stu Miniman coming to you from our Boston area studio. Happy to welcome back to the program one of our longtime Cube alums, Travis V. Hill. He is the Senior Vice President of Product Management for Storage and Data Protection at Dell Technologies. Travis, nice to see you. It's great to see you, Stu, as always. All right, so, so Travis, while we aren't at Dell Tech World, uh, you know, th this, this May uh, 2020, that's gonna be uh, handled in the fall. There are a lot of things happening in the storage world. Uh, your teams announced uh, Power Store uh, just a, a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, many other things happening in the storage world and we're gonna get to dig into it. So I guess, let, let, let's start there uh, with, you know, the, the new mid-range solution. Uh, I had a great conversation with Caitlin Gordon What's the initial feedback you've been getting from the field, uh, you know, and, and from customers, of course? You know, Stu, it's been a, it's been a whirlwind of a couple of weeks um, with the public unveiling of PowerStore. Uh, this was a major release for us. You know, simply put, I've referred to it as probably the most important and strategic launch that we've had at Dell since the combination of Dell and EMC. Um, I personally have been involved with the program for a little over two years, um, and we have had significant investment in bringing this product to fruition. Over a thousand engineers across Dell Technologies, including engineers at VMware, uh, put in tireless time, hours, um, innovation into bringing this product to market, and we're, we're extremely excited about it. Um, the press has been very positive uh, on the launch, on the capabilities, uh, but more importantly, customers and partners have been extremely positive on the launch and, and the capabilities. Uh, Stu, we've been talking for multiple years now about the fact that we are going to be simplifying our product line, especially in the mid-range, and the release of PowerStore is uh, a major milestone in that simplification. And, um, you know, I can go into speeds and feeds and what differentiates it, but to me, uh, the biggest um, part of this announcement is um, that we have a product in the market that is resonating with the field, resonating with customers, uh, resonating with partners, and, um, you know, feedback from the largest beta program that we've, we've done as a part of uh, a mid-range storage launch ever. Uh, gave us early indications that things would be, uh, you know, the feedback would come back this way. And uh, we're very happy with the, the initial traction that we're, we're receiving. Well, yeah, Travis, you know, definitely a lot of work. You said over a thousand engineers working on that. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's interesting, you know, you think back to the storage world, you know, for a long time, it was, you know, growth of product line through acquisitions. Of course, you know, Dell made uh, a couple of acquisitions you're quite familiar with over the years. EMC over yeah. the years made many acquisitions. Tell me, what does it mean for a thousand engineers to work on something? You know, often you'll hear, uh, you know, oh, well, you know, a startup of 50 people, they built some new thing and, you know, that, you know, rocketed them to the next thing. And, you know, by the time they get to a thousand people, oftentimes, you know, they're talking about have they been acquired or, you know, are they going public? So, you know, why is that investment needed? And, you know, what's, what's the outcome of that kind of, you know, starting from the ground up solution? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question, Stu. I when I when I think about it, we, what we set out to do um, with PowerStore was is something very ambitious, which is to simplify the product lines to bring the best uh, not the the best capabilities of the um, the the current shipping mid range products into a next generation architecture. And when we looked at doing that we quickly determined that in order to be flexible and to be able to innovate quickly, enable to, to be able to um, provide the features and capabilities needed to bring all of those uh, customers forward, we had to make significant investment. And, you know, I don't know of another example to your, uh, to your uh, point of a company having done this uh, internally. Um, especially, you know, with a heritage of, of acquisition. And, and so getting to um, build something from the ground up that is optimized and modern for the workloads of today, but also able to bring customers from previous uh, or current generation products forward 
is something that's been really special uh, and something that I think, uh, you know, that, that Dell will be able to um, continue to innovate and lead the market in mid-range from the investment that we made for the, for, you know, well into the future. All right, so Tra Travis, one of the other discussions we've been having with the Dell team quite a bit uh, over the last couple of years is how storage fits into the whole discussion of cloud. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's some recent announcements, you've got recent products. Uh, how is Dell thinking about you know, that, that world of storage and how that integrates into the customer's overall cloud discussion? Yeah, if I think about cloud, um, I, think, I think about a couple things. One, there's sort of the, the cloud operating model, which is, you know, things need to be really simple. Things to, need to be autonomous. Uh, there's this concept of being able to provide private cloud functionality on-prem. And so, you know, when I, th when I look at um, some of the capabilities that we've built into to Power Store, for example, it's delivering that cloud-like, simple to, to use, simple to scale experience, but on-prem. Then I think the other aspect of cloud, which is just as important is, you know, how do, um, how do on-prem products integrate with leverage and really allow the capabilities um, that they provide to be to be used both on-prem in a hybrid cloud environment or you know directly as part of a service in a public cloud and we have seen that customers um, that are looking at us uh, customers that are um, in specific industries or looking at specific workloads are really looking for that flexibility that burst capability if you will to be ever able to leverage certain capabilities across on-prem and in the cloud. And specifically, we've seen that demand with customers that utilize our Isilon products, our 1FS products. Um, those customers, um, some of them are corporate, using them for kind of uh, traditional file workloads, um, you know, enterprise file workloads, but there's a, a uh, a big chunk of customers that are in specific verticals like life sciences, genomics, like genomic sequencing, uh, media and entertainment, things like collaborative video, video editing, um, or wanting to the ability to burst to the cloud for video rendering, um, uh, use cases like autonomous driving, where the massive scalability that we have in 1FS uh, for those customers that are using it in an on-prem solution, they want to be able to also utilize it in a public cloud as a public cloud capability. And so um, part of what we're, we're announcing is uh, the ability to utilize 1FS as a native capability in Google Cloud. And um, lots of interest from customers of the type that I just, just spoke about to be able to leverage that capability. And it's really like uh, the capabilities we're bringing are like nothing else on the market. Uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating to say that the, the scalability, the performance, the capacity are orders of magnitude better than what competitors can provide with, with their cloud capabilities. Yeah, well, Travis, absolutely. If, if I think about the word scale, you know, Google's one of the first companies that comes to mind. You know, right, so right. Who else has the global reach uh, the, and the networking capability? Um, it's been interesting to watch, you know, Dell has partnerships and the Dell family has partnerships uh, with, you know, a lot of, the, you know, pretty much all the cloud providers at this point. Um, so, you know, what, what's special about, you know, the, the Google solution you said, unparalleled there, you know, bring us underneath the covers a little bit and help us understand what really differentiates uh, the 1FS solution that you're doing with Google Cloud. Yeah, so I'll take it back to the workloads. The, the life sciences, media entertainment, autonomous driving, they need massively scalable file solutions from a performance perspective and a capacity perspective. And the uh, solution that we've, uh, we've engineered, co-engineered with Google Cloud um, provides massive scalability and massive capacity. 
in particular um, versus one of our closest competitors, it's 46 times higher in terms of read throughput, 96 times higher in terms of write throughput, put, and 500 times higher in terms of maximum file system capacity. And these workloads require it. I mean, these are massive file-based repositories, and it's not just the capacity, but it's the performance of that capacity that is extremely important. So much like the value we bring on-prem with uh, 1FS, we're bringing that value uh, to the cloud, to Google, and because you have, you know, you're utilizing common 1FS, whether you're on-prem or uh, in the cloud, you have native replication capabilities available for customers that want to do that bursting. Yeah, it, it, it's been fascinating, uh, Travis. You know, my background's a little bit more on the block side of the house than the file side of the house. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, from, you know, mid-range storage where we kind of, you know, put block and file together to get unified, then you saw the huge explosion of the, the scale-out NAS uh, type solutions. Um, and then one of the things, you know, you know, the whole industry looked at is, you know, what's that gap between object, which is what, you know, is typically underlying the cloud storage, and files. So many of these solutions, you know, are really blurring those lines, pulling these things together. So that, I mean, ultimately, you know, customers don't need to think about, you know, some of those underlying, you know, storage networking architectures. That's uh, right. They can just solve their problems. So. That's, yeah, no, no I, I, think you're, I think you're exactly right. And, you know, I, I actually come from a, a mid-range uh, background as well. Um, and the, you know, I've been associated with the, uh, with, with 1FS and, and Isilon for a couple of years now. And the, the amazing thing to me is the growth of data, right? You know this stat better than I do, Stu, which is 80% of all the data generated in the next decade, it will be unstructured. And so that's not to say that, you know, traditional storage arrays aren't going to continue to, to grow. Those workloads are growing as well. But the massive growth and, and the reason that there is such a, a desire to do things in or close to the clouds for file-based workloads comes from that underlying growth. Yeah. So, Travis, I, I guess one of the other things that, that's interesting to look at as with the global pandemic going on, you know, automation is front and front and center for customers. You know, I can't go touch my gear. Uh, so therefore, or, you know, I need to limit how often I would need to do that. So, you know, how does that just overall usability, uh, you know, autonomous nature of these type of solutions fit into everything we've been talking about? Yeah, it's, I mean, it, it's core. Um, to, to solutions going further forward, whether you're talking about the, the um, 1FS Google solution or whether you're talking about PowerStore, uh, more and more customers need to be focused on the business outcomes or the IT outcomes and not the care and feeding or tweaking of, of the equipment. And so, you know, I, I think the best example of that is, um, you know, what we've done with PowerStore in terms of that ground up architecture that's really built with machine learning directly into um, the platform and the ability to take multiple power stores and look at them as a single logical unit and make recommendations about where things should be located and, and best configured. And so, you know, we, we know because of the fact that we're taking in all of this IO, whether it be on, you know, our file solutions or, or our block or slash unified solutions, um, what the underlying workloads are, and the fact that we're building in this, this, uh, this knowledge, this intelligence into the system uh, is part of why um, we designed the architecture from the ground up when you're talking about power store. And, and if you go back and look at the, the original design of 1FS and that highly scaled out architecture, you know, that's, that's, uh, it's been a calling card for 1FS since almost day, day one, which is this concept of simplicity at scale, right? And, you know, the fact that um, you have petabytes and petabytes of, of data shouldn't mean that you need tens or hundreds of, hundreds of people to, to manage and feed it. You, you should, you know, you should be able to administer it with, with uh, a small number of, of IT professionals. All right. 
Travis, want to give you the final word, you know, bring us inside, you know, customer conversations you're having and, and what else uh, customers should know about really Dell Technologies today. You know, it's, uh, it's a very interesting time to be part of a technology company with everything that's going on. And I think, you know, the last several months have show, shown us that digital transformation is key to companies' success. I look at I look at Dell Technologies and the fact that you know basically over the the the, um, the course of a week, you know, we went from very few people or a, you know a minority of people working remotely to almost the entire company working remotely. And the you know the thing that made that happen was our our underlying IT systems and the fact that they are built on capabilities that are resilient, that are autonomous, that are modern. And so, you know, I'm extremely bullish about um, the capabilities that we're bringing to market. Uh, I'm extremely bullish about um, the, uh, the, the cloud capabilities that we're building in uh, to our solutions, especially on the unstructured side of the house. And uh, um, I think that, uh, the uh, the next uh, the next wave of um, I would say the the uh, thing that that this uh, this pandemic has highlighted is the need to be a digital business going forward, and you know I think that speaks very well for the prospects of Dell Technologies going forward and for our infrastructure solutions going forward as well. All right, well, Travis, pleasure catching up. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Stu. It's always a pleasure. All right, be sure to check out thecube.net for all the upcoming shows, as well as you can search through the archives. Uh, I've got interviews, as, as Travis and I mentioned, on, on PowerStore and many of the other Dell announcements. So be sure to check those out. I'm Stu Miniman, and as always, thank you for watching theCUBE.